Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And we're going to go on a journey into the sacred. I'm so excited about this. It's a fascinating journey. And the author who's with us today has been on that journey and has written a beautiful book about someone a lot of people know about, Teresa of Avila. And this is a book about Teresa of Avila. And I, I can't really tell who was who reading the book, because I, I know that this author really holds and embraces the truths of this. And that's Megan Don. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Peter. It's great to be with you and uh, with your listeners also. Well, this is um, such a great journey that, that you're on. Yes. And and uh, reading this book, I... Uh, I, I, you're so absorbed into Teresa of Avila. Are you? May, you maybe she she was a previous life of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it felt like it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it. And the book is so well written, and it covers so much territory of of her life. And and I didn't know anything about her. I've heard of her, but mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about her before this. And I got this book, and it's it's called Meditations with Teresa of Avila, and and I'm not really a great promoter of meditating, only because it's so different for everyone, and mm. and uh, we all find our way. Sure. And and uh, and yet the meditations in this book I found very interesting, very well directed, uh, because you have a meditation for. Every one of the many, 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 many chapters in the book. It's not that huge a book, but it's broken down into small chapters. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I found those meditations to be really interesting, mm-hmm. uh, good subject matter to to delve delve into in a meditation. And and uh, so let's talk about. What what the essence of of this teaching is? This is she was a teacher. Yes. And yes. and you're now carrying on this education. <laughs> right. <laughs> in a in a manner of speaking, yes, yes. She has um, you know a great deal um, of wisdom uh, to give us today. Um, I think on many levels, uh, Peter, because she was um, a reformer. You know, you could almost call her a a prophetic reformer um, in what she was doing by bringing forward uh, women and uh, women leadership. Um, She was teaching people how to reconnect with their inner source and being. um, And how to live that in the world. So a lot of people seem to think that, you know, she may have been disconnected, but that was actually one of her greatest strengths, that she was very much active in the world, including buying and selling real estate, fundraising, you know, conversant with tax laws, as well as going very deeply in to the soul and its in a journey, um, and she was also reforming, you know, corrupt institutions, her, her religious institution, and she was uh, sort of going against social mores of the time. So I feel that she brings forward wisdom that is very contemporary and very relevant for us right now, as as you know, institutions are crumbling as we're being asked to step up and, and co-create and find our own pathway. I mean, that's, too, what she was very adamant about. You know, there are many, many pathways uh, along this journey, and it is up to you to find what actually is relevant for your soul. And, and also being open to the flexibility of that may change as, as you go along, so being very fluid. Well, and that's so much of what this book is about is is what it took for her to mm-hmm. be the way she was. She was very, very advanced spiritually, yeah, and to the point where she became a heretic in her in the church mm. and and was actually on trial yes 
And and um, it, it, you know the church is famous for finding the great masters, and they put them on trial. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And and so she had to undergo great sacrifice in order to be true to her her path. And her and her spiritual path was so advanced that and her meditations were so advanced. And yet, as you say, she lived a, a very grounded life. Mm. But at, at one point in her in her journey, you say in the book that she and um, John of the, of the Cross mm-hmm. were levitating together. Yes. Yes. Which, Imagine that. I know. Someone actually said to me once, you don't believe that, do you? <laughs> and I said, well, it's been, you know, documented and well known that Indian gurus levitate. And we kind of, we don't question that because, you know, the more extraordinary uh, spiritual feats, shall we say, are kind of well known in the East, you know, and all sorts of weird and wonderful things come out of there. But the minute we look at our Western tradition, it's like, oh, no, that that couldn't happen. But I think if we really understand it, and I mean, you know, I'm no, no physicist at all, but to me it sort of makes sense that if one is entering into another vibration and one is fully... Uh, it absorbed and encapsulating that, that the density of the body and the density of the cells also rise in vibration. Yes, and 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 so you know this this book covers a lot of territory because it, it it it's not only spiritual it's also it also talks about religion. Yeah. And people's approach uh, and how we deal with life. And so much of it is it's probably all about how we deal with life mm-hmm. because it's it's a guidebook. This is a wonderful book for people to 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 have handy uh, to be inspired and to and to remember ourselves in our sacred way yeah and and I think that's one of the the, the primary greatnesses of of this book is that it helps us relate to our sacred path and understand it better mm. and and be better at it. Yes. Yes. She was, you know, she had remarkable insight into human nature. And um, so she was well aware of all of the tricks that the ego and the mind play on us. And she was very astute in her process of discernment, you know, discerning what was true and what was appearing as a truth and was really quite false, but was trying to make ourselves, you know, make you comfortable or allow you not to change or allow you not to face up to things that you would rather not. So she was incredibly um, gifted with insight in this way, and that's what I think a lot of her teachings um, are, are very helpful for. I know people will say that they keep this book by their bedside, and um, often when something is, is proving problematic for them, they will simply open it, and, and there, right there, will be one of Therese's wisdoms you know, really pinning them down and and opening the doorway so that they can find uh, liberation. And and this is what she says, you know, do you want liberation? And and that's a really good question because do we really want it or do we want to stay um, in our own little ways and patterns right, that but, we've created? And the point is to understand what liberation means. Yes. And, and and this book helps to do that, and there's so many lesson plans in it. And I was just thinking of one um, about humility. She doesn't only talk about humility. She right. talks about false humility. Yes, yes. Uh, that, to me, is, is one of... Uh, my favorite teachings of her. I mean, it's it's so beautiful. She really takes it into a place that you wouldn't expect it to go. Um, because first of all, you know, she says when we when we walk on our journey, we we start to get a little sense that we do have some wisdom here, and and then we want people to to notice us for it. You know, and she said, well, this clearly <laughs> is not a trap. You know, <laughs> this is not humility, you know. <laughs> and then she said, then we move to the next stage, and then we go, 
well, I have this wisdom, but I don't want anybody to see it. I'm going to be completely self-effacing and just sort of work in the background here. But she said all the time secretly harboring the, the, the desire that someone will notice us secretly working. <laughs> That's amazing what that ego knows how to do. Yeah. And she said, you know, that clearly isn't it. And then she said, then we go into a place of indifference. You know, where we're noticed or we're not noticed, it really doesn't matter to us. And she said most people think that at that point they've arrived at humility because they are sitting in this place of indifference. And she said, no, this isn't even humility. The next step is when you are willing for that, that divine light within you to shine and that People are seeing it and that you are willing for them to see it however that you are aware that it is uh, the divine source coming through you that is true humility when you are willing for that light to shine and to be seen right and so there's a in a sense there's a surrender here oh yes and yes because we have to surrender our ego about it mm-hmm. and and realize that uh you know we're our mind is a small player yes indeed indeed and that uh it pl- and it keeps on playing games <laughs> yes it does it does you know there's a great i love it in the in the song of songs actually um there's a great uh passage in there where it says the little foxes are causing havoc in the vineyard. And that's how I think about some of our ego thoughts, that they're like these little foxes ca- causing havoc in the vineyard. Right. <laughs> right. So, but she also spoke about, you know, the ability to move um, from, you know, being controlled by this smaller mind and having the ability, she said, we have the ability to walk through the mind of God and to really enter a larger mind and she made the distinction between mind and intellect and not using intellect in how we would use it but using it in the sense of divine intelligence and i think that this is beautiful and this is where she's very wholesome so she's not throwing out the mind completely um she's you know she's finding the right relationship with the larger divine intellect. Well, and I is, think that that's extraordinary. And just the right. thought of, of saying, you know, we can walk through the mind of God is um, an infinite journey. But it's also about being responsible and, you know, in, intelligently being responsible uh-huh. for our path as well as surrendering to the, the greater mind. Yes, yes. I mean, therein, therein lies the beautiful paradox, which, you know, we in the West have, have great difficulty with, um, that we certainly need to surrender and we need to step into. So it's, it's a stepping into who we are. Um, and it's, it's, I guess it's a really having that clarity or the discernment about right. what, who are we surrendering to? Right, and 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 what is you know what is the truth of it? Because there are a lot of of very a lot of spiritual people on this planet that are very flaky. Yes, indeed. And and that are speaking in ways that don't serve anybody mm-hmm. nor themselves, mm-hmm. and and they attribute that to you know the greater word. Yeah, and yeah. and and so a lot of people don't have that discernment, mm, mm. and I think that you know that's where we all have to, you know, really do judge from. I mean, we do have to use discernment. We have mm. to judge what makes sense on all levels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But, you know, we can't just give in to saying, "Oh, spirit speaks through me." And whatever I have to say uh, is worthy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. know that. Uh, no, no. That could be called illusion. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yes, but we have to be very wary. Um, and, and that's what Teresa says. 
There, we have many, many voices within us, and we must learn to discern who and what those voices really are. You know, and, uh, 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 that's what she saw, havoc being, you know, caused by people's good intentions, you know, by their um, inner, supposedly inner insights, which were clearly only their own projections, you know, and that's what she said, oh, the amount of mess I've had to clean up from people's good intentions. Oh, I love that. that that's so important, and, and, and especially nowadays, there's so much confusion. There is. Uh, as to what is truth and what isn't, and... Mm -hmm. What mm. you know? What our intentions? What our are our intentions bringing us? Mm. And and it, it's amazing how much ignorance there is on this planet at this point. Right. And I think that's all of these small minds and small-minded leadership also. Yes. And 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 uh, manipulation and mm. propaganda and all kinds of things that are going on that mm -hmm. confuse people, including the church. Yeah, oh, yes, most definitely. Well, and I think, too, that what happens is that what we don't realize is that the ego has its concept of what spirituality is. And that's where we get tricked. Yeah, and right. that's where the false prophets arise. You know, and I think, um, you know, Yeshua or, or Jesus actually spoke about this you know, he said there'll be times to come and, and to watch out for for false prophets saying, oh, here it is over here or here it is here, you know. And that might have easily been a lot of the people who followed him. Yes, it could well have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I do think it's probably been going on for, for eons. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And you know, and then all of a sudden somebody like uh Teresa is is born who actually understands this connection yes. with greater consciousness with um, as she calls it with the beloved mm. and it's beautiful to see that relationship grow in her yes the, it, it is and I mean I think that is very encouraging for us it's not like she had you know a flash of of, of instant enlightenment you know it was a journey for her and and a very uh, deep journey, you know, where she did struggle with a lot of uh, inner fear, a lot of self-doubt, you know, her, her self-worth. Um, so she's dealing with things that I think many people today are being confronted with as well. Right, and she started off as an, an everyday person. Yeah, absolutely. Completely... Uh, entranced by the world and by materiality and you know she was a noble woman and a very passionate woman you know so yes. she had many attachments right and she was very socially adept uh, uh -huh. and appreciated gossip <laughs> oh yes yeah she loved to know what was going on and who was with who and <laughs> right. and it took her a long time to actually release that even when she was in the in the convent, you know, twenty years in, she was still uh, wanting to know well, what was happening. <laughs> well, but also, see, life is about interconnectedness, yes. and people think of convents and and monasteries as isolation, uh, and and she promoted intimacy very much so, um, so much so that 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 many of the priests were afraid of her. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> And she just laughed and she said, you have no idea what I am about, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> because she was really, truly uh, the true sense of intimacy. That was soul intimacy. And that's what she, she did say, you know, if your relationship with somebody is opening your world and opening your life and, and, and bringing you deeper into yourself and into your spirit and towards the beloved, then by all means, go for it, you know. And she said, <laughs> if it's taking you away, then that's when you may need to look at it and, and you know, take a second look right. at that particular relationship. 
So there was always <laughs> a sense of right relationship. You know, it's it's very Buddhist in that way. You know, yes, right relationship, well, right last, speech. You know, last year I had a a, a Zen Buddhist uh, priest on on the show, mm -hmm. and he had a book about uh, sexuality. Right. And it was all about hot sex. Mm -hmm. And it was all fi everything was fine as long as you weren't hurting anybody. Right. And and people don't realize that there's all of these superficial restrictions yeah. that have to do with you know there's so many people out there who are spiritual and think that you should repress joy. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and Nothing could be further from the truth. Right. I mean the Taliban, you know, they they still teach that now. Yeah. And and the Amish, and I mean not that the Amish aren't joyful, but there's so much plainness and yeah. And I look at at, at Teresa now from from reading your book as mm. this beautifully colorful woman who really in, enjoyed all of the essences of reality. Yes. I mean, one of my favorite uh, images, actually, of Teresa was you know, she she um, would bring out the castanets and do the flamenco. You know, I mean, what an image of a of a nun in full habit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it, and and she actually wrote in her. You know, they would write various rules and and sort of guidelines for the communities that she created, and one of them was that you must you must have fun at least one hour a day <laughs> well in my neighborhood uh, years ago there was a, a convent up up the, the road mm -hmm. and and there used to be all these nuns in running shoes going for workouts in in their gear you know <laughs> but but it, but but wearing their their uh you know their convent clothes too right right and, and and then the convent put a stop to that. It wasn't oh. it wasn't becoming for nuns to be runners. Oh, that's awful. That's awful. Yes, yeah. I mean Teresa was a very uh, you know creative woman. She loved to to sing, and she would spontaneously create songs and little you know little ditties and poems. And apparently, she had this incredible uh, sense of humor. You know, and she would even at times take certain sacred things and, and find the, you know, give a humorous twist to them. So, um, and she was also very, very wise in that, you know, she said nobody should be too busy with their inner work or their outer work that they cannot come and have fun, you know, for this hour every day. And, and she was just also said, and besides, you cannot stay angry with someone you're having fun with, <laughs> you know, so, which Good. was a really wonderful thing. I mean, if you had 20 women living together, I'm sure there were some hot issues at times between them, you know. Sure. So this was a very, um, just a very natural way of breaking that energy or, or any tension. Um, I think she was she was quite a, a master at creating community as well. Well, they also had to she had to and the convent had to deal with the outside world, mm -hmm. and especially in the male male dominant church. Yeah. And 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 also all the business people around the real estate and the and the services needed by the convent. Yes. And yes. and that that was very difficult. Yes. Well, they had to uh, you know support themselves. So she was. She was responsible, really, for finding ways and means for them to gain income and to feed themselves and support themselves. And um, so that, again, she was very, um, very worldly, you know. There, there was no sense of her, them being looked after by some, you know, trust fund or some fund coming from the church. They were having to, to fend for themselves. And when you think that she created 17 monasteries, you know, it's extraordinary, 17 communities. And she actually would hand pick all the nuns to live in them because she felt it was very important on a psychological level that these women who were living together were compatible and they were complementary to one another. Right. I read in the book that she realized that a lot of women just couldn't make the grade. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and and so, you know, so this is a a, a realistic life that she led, very yes. realistic and yet about as spiritual as you can get. Yeah. 
And and I think that's what what we can learn from this too, because we're all having to get up every day and mm. make our breakfast, or you know, mm. and deal with. Um, you know, is there enough gas in the car or whatever? Mm. Um, and and yet, we we also uh, need to connect to our greater self and the greater universe. Yeah, yeah. I really do think that 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 is the the greatest lesson she gives us is bringing that contemplative and active together. And and in fact, when you walk on this mystic path. You know, I think many people have the erroneous view that, that, you know, kind of when you're in the advanced stage that you'll be sort of off secluded away, just purely enwrapped in God. And it's sort of like, well, you are, but you're right in the world. The mature mystic is thrown back into the world in quite a rigorous way so right. that that wisdom can be truly lived and shared, and shared. with others. Right, very, exactly. Very real and very practical. It's the role right. model, sure. Yeah. But if you're that wise, you got to be out there helping it's, others learn from that. Exactly, and just and more so by example too. Exactly, and so you know the right. The example is not to uh, escape. The example is to engage. Yes, yes. I mean, now this is one of the the you know the sayings too of Jesus. I came that that you may have life. And you may have it in fullness and in abundance, you know, and and the joy with that. So, um, well, I, Saint Saint Teresa, she was sainted, and that's so beautiful that mm. eventually that she was honored for her greatness. Yes. And and I'm so glad we only have a few minutes left. I'm so glad that you uh, are on this this path, this journey, and mm. and we're able to put this book together. And I know that you teach about this, and yes. you do workshops. And mm -hmm. uh, please tell our audience all about you. Um. Well. You know, I, I think what, what I also do is take pilgrimages to Avila, Spain, which are quite remarkable journeys because her presence is still very alive and fiery in Avila. And I also take um, pilgrimages to other places, Assisi, Italy, as I've also written a book on Claire of Assisi. Um, and my Celtic heritage uh, draws me to Ireland and Glastonbury, so that's a big part of what I do is to to take people to these places. There's something very special happens when our when our bodily self connects with the the, the sacredness of where other people have you know really joined with the with the enlightened source of their being. Um, so this and, is a great joy for me. And how do people find you? Um, and my website is mysticpeace.com. So it's M-Y-S-T-I-C-P-E-A-C-E dot com. Mysticpeace.com. And, and th this is wonderful. I, uh, I do encourage the, the listeners to become re your readers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and uh, definitely climb into this book and... and uh, and it's so much that is enlightening, reaffirming. Um, it, it helps in, on every level of life. Yes, yes, and it gives a great strength to the feminine spirit. You know, whether you're male or female, it really, I think, draws forward that that inner strength from the feminine perspective, which well, was so lacking in the church. Right, right, and and every everyone needs to have. Part feminine, part masculine. Yes. And, yes. And so, exactly. Yeah, and this is so beautiful. So well, it was. It was a gift. To, how I see it, Peter, it was a gift to me. So it's my delight to to gift it out to the world. Well, and, and you certainly have. So Megan Don, thank you so much for being a guest today. It's been wonderful talking with you, and congratulations about having such a wonderful book out there. Thank you so much, Peter. It's been lovely speaking with you. Thank you. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew with Progressive Radio Network. And I can be reached at Peter at Heart River, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. And thank you so much for listening. <laughs>